All right, so this example 14 is really kind of a fun one. Uh, well, fun for some people. It has to do with Fermat's last theorem, which is, you know, to kind of give you some perspective. So Fermat was this cat. He was a lawyer, and math was his hobby. And he used to go home at night and do math problems, and he was reading this book. I think it was called Principal Mathematicus. You know, everything was, it was written in Latin. Uh, back then, everything was written in Latin that was scientific. He wrote in Latin, not in French, even though he was French. Um, and he used to write all kinds of things in this book, you know, oh, I know how to prove this, or this is not true, or whatever. And what happened was he died. And his son took that book, Principal Mathematicus, and, and republished it with all of his little annotations in it. And that kind of became the version of the book that everybody read. And through the years, people were looking at all the things that he claimed to be true and said, well, let's start proving these. So, you know, for 200 years, 300 years, it's been like 350 years, people have been proving all of the things that Fermat claimed to be true. And they were all true, but Fermat's last theorem, right? Um, and it, so his last theorem wasn't the last one he wrote in the book. It was the last one to be proven. Everything else had been proven at that point. So Fermat's last theorem was the last one to be proven. Um, by the way, we're pretty sure that he, in fact, did not have a proof, that whatever his proof was was wrong. But, uh, you know, the, the conjecture itself turned out to be true. And his problem is kind of an interesting one. It, it's, uh, you know, x squared plus y squared equals z squared is true for a whole lot of numbers, right? And we know that's true because that is um, part of the link, or that describes the links of a right triangle, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know there are lots of values x, y, and z that will satisfy this. Well, what about x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. Are there three numbers that will satisfy that? Or x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals z to the fourth. Are there any numbers that will satisfy that? And Fermat says no. Fermat says for any values greater than two, there are no numbers that will satisfy that, which is really kind of an interesting thing to say. So we do not, for the purpose of this class, need to prove that. Uh, but what we do want to do is, is how would we state that? So how do we state that for any values greater than two, there are no values x, y, and z that will satisfy this equation? So how do we state that? How do we state Fermat's theorem um, in predicate logic? Well, we would say that for all n that are members of the set of natural numbers, positive natural numbers, we don't need to worry about zero here. There exists an x, a y, and a z, which are also members of the set of positive natural numbers, such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n implies and as implied and is implied by the statement n is less than or equal to 2 which is kind of a confusing way to say it but it is correct right so for any n in the positive natural numbers right one or above there exists an x y and z within the positive natural numbers such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n. If that is true, then n is less than or equal to 2. By the same token, if n is less than or equal to 2, then there exists an x, y, and z within the natural numbers such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n, which means n cannot be greater than 2. So it can't be 3, 4, 5, 6, all those other numbers we were looking at. Um, so that was Fermat's last theorem. It was finally proven by Andrew Wiles um, fairly recently, I think in the 90s. Uh, a really interesting problem for mathematicians. Not super interesting for us, but interesting in the sense that we want to know how to state that problem using predicate logic. If you have any questions, 
ask in the forum below. I'm also going to link to an interesting little uh, mini documentary on Fermat's last theorem, uh, which kind of goes into the whole process of solving it. It's really kind of cool.